In this problem, we have a problem that at first glance looks like something you might see in an advanced algebra class. It seems doable. Let a and b be positive integers such that a b plus 1 divides a squared plus b squared. Now show that a squared plus b squared divided by a b plus 1 is a perfect square. However, this problem is deceptive, since not from a textbook. It's from the 1988 International Mathematical Olympiad, or IMO, and it is widely considered one of the most difficult and beautiful problems proposed in the competition's history. So the question is, can we solve it? Well, first of all, we know that a squared plus b squared divided by ab plus 1 has to be an integer. So we can call a squared plus b squared divided by ab plus 1 equals to k. So our goal is to prove that k must be a perfect square. So what's the first thing most of us would do? Let's try some simple numbers. That's always a good way to get a feel for a problem. So when a equals to 1 and b equals to 1, we have 1 squared plus 1 squared divided by 1 times 1 plus 1 equals to 2 over 2 equals to 1 or 1 squared. This works. Now, what about a equals to 1 and b equals to 2? Well, then we have 1 squared plus 2 squared divided by 1 times 2 plus 1 equals to 5 over 3. That's not even an integer. So the condition that a b plus 1 divides a squared plus b squared is important. It does not work for all pairs of integers. So you see the problem here. We can't just guess the numbers. So we need a different approach. Let's get back to our equation. Let's assume we have a solution, a pair of positive integers a and b that work for a particular integer value of k. The crucial step here is to rearrange this equation into a quadratic in terms of a. So we can let, by rearranging, we'll have a squared plus b squared equals to kab plus k. So we'll have a squared minus kb times a plus b squared minus k equal to zero. Now look at that. We have a standard quadratic equation. x squared minus kb times x plus b squared minus k equal to zero. And we know that one of the roots must be, we can say as x1 equals to a. Because it's a quadratic, it must have another root. We can call this as x2. What can we say about the other root though? This is where we can use a powerful technique in number theory called Vieta jumping. It's like a form of proof by contradiction. So we can start with an assumption. Assume that k is integer but not a perfect square. So, now out of all the possible pairs of positive integers, a, b, that solve this equation for our non-square non k, let's choose a special pair. Let's pick the one where the sum a plus b is the absolute smallest possible sum. Let's call this solution as a1, b, with and without loss of generality, we can assume that a1 is greater than or equal to b. So basically, we just let a1 b be a solution with the smallest or the minimum a1 plus b. And then assume 
a1 greater than or equal to b. Okay, back to our quadratic. One root is x1 equals to a1. What about the other root, x2? Here, we can apply Vieta's four formulas. So, by Vieta's formula, the sum of roots would be, we can just plug in the formula. So, we'll have x1 plus x2 equals to kb x1 times x2 equals to b squared minus k. From the first formula, since a1 equals to x1, we have a1 plus x2 equals to kb. We can rearrange this to find x2. So we can write x2 equals to kb minus a1. Since k, b, and a are all integers, x2 must also be an integer. So we found an integer solution to our equation. Now we can look at the second formula. We'll have a1 x2 equal to b squared minus k. We can also use this to express x2. x2 equals to b squared minus k divided by a1. Now, let's analyze this new integer solution, x2. First, can it be 0? If x2 equals to 0, then b squared minus k equals to 0, which will mean that k equals to b squared. But this will mean that k is a perfect square. So this contradicts our initial assumption. Therefore, x2 cannot be 0. Now, can x2 be a negative number? Well, since b and a1 are positive, if x2 is a solution, x to b must satisfy our or original equation. So you just plug it in. And then we'll realize that x2 must be a positive integer. So basically what I'm saying here is, if x2 is negative, then x squared is positive. If you have x2 as minus, then x2 squared, which is a perfect square, is positive or plus sign. And then we know that the negative of kb times x squared or times x2 is positive because plus times minus times plus is still plus. And then we have b squared is positive. The only potentially ne negative term here is negative k, but we can show that for positive solutions, k must be positive. So b squared minus k could be negative, but it can be shown that the whole expression must be positive, which will lead to a contradiction. So this might sound confusing, so just pause it and prove it yourself. However, the result is that x2 must be a positive integer. So x2 belongs to the set of positive integers. Now, so we have found a new pair of positive integers, x2b, that is also a solution to our equation. But then think about our or original pair, a1b. We chose it because it had a smallest possible sum. Let's see how our new solution compares. Look at this expression again, x2 min x2 is equal to b squared minus k divided by a1. Since k is positive, so, and also b squared minus k, it has to be less than b squared, then we'll have x2 is going to be equal to b squared minus k divided by a1 less than b squared divided by a1. Back to our assumption, we said that a1 is greater than or equal to b. So 
So a1 is greater than or equal to b, meaning that b squared is less than or equal to a1 squared. Therefore, x2 has to be less than b squared, less than a1, less than or equal to a1 squared, divided by a1 equal to a1. So we have x2 is less than a1. So just prove that our new x2 is a positive integer that is strictly smaller than a1. And there it is, contradiction. x2 less than a1 contradicts. So the contradiction here means that we started by picking a a1b that had the minimum possible sum, but we just used it to construct an, a, a solution x2b where x2 plus b is smaller than a1 plus b. This is impossible. It breaks our, in our first premise. So this crash means that our very first assumption must have been wrong. Our assumption was that k is an integer that is not a perfect square. Since that assumption is a logical impossibility, it must be false. So, therefore we have k is equal to a squared plus b squared divided by ab plus 1, which must be a perfect square. So now the proof is complete. And that is how you solve this problem.